Welcome back, mitochondriacs, for another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. I am really happy to be back with you today to further discuss the therapeutic inhibition of glutamine, both uptake and utilization. And I think that it would probably be fair to say that the majority of you all who found metabolic therapy probably came to it by the way of the man himself, Dr. Thomas Seafried. And he is obviously the dedicated researcher up at Boston College who is putting together a lot of this important information that was started many years ago by Dr. Otto Warburg. And one of the important discoveries that has been made since Otto Warburg's time was the critical reliance that cancer cells have on the amino acid glutamine. And glutamine is a non-essential amino acid, which means that our bodies can synthesize or make our own sources of glutamine, which means that restricting dietary glutamine is a no-go in terms of strategy because you're always going to be able to make glutamine from amino acids that are currently in your body. So unlike glucose, where we can be on a therapeutic ketogenic diet, we can do fasting, we can do these things, and we're going to talk about a lot of the things we can do to inhibit glucose uptake and utilization in the near future. But glutamine is a different story. Glutamine requires some other intervention. And I'm excited to present that there are a lot of interventions that have a lot of promise in this area. And I too want to see more of the natural glutamine inhibitors presented. And as a matter of fact, during this micro series of glutamine inhibition, the vast, vast majority are going to be supplements, nutraceuticals, phytonutrients that have the ability to shut down in one way, shape, or form part of the glutamine metabolism utilized aberrantly by cancer cells, but it would be a little short-sighted not to address the elephant in the room. And that elephant in the room is Dawn. Dawn is a drug that was designed in the 1950s and has been studied ever since. Dawn is still being studied today, 2024 publications. It hasn't gone anywhere. It is a drug and I'm going to give the backstory of Dawn and how Dawn works and how it can integrate into a larger combination approach to the mitochondrial metabolic therapy. So let's get into it. So this paper is titled, We're Not Dawn Yet, Optimal Dosing and Prodrug Delivery of 6-Diazo-5-Oxy-L-Norleucine. And it says, the broadly active glutamine antagonist, Dawn, has been studied for 60 years as a potential anti-cancer therapeutic. Clinical studies of Dawn in the 1950s using low daily doses suggest anti-tumor activity, but later phase one and two trials of Dawn given intermittently at high doses were hampered by dose-limiting nausea and vomiting. Further, clinical strategic development of Dawn was abandoned. Recently, the recognition that multiple tumor types are glutamine dependent has renewed interest in metabolic inhibitors such as Dawn. So what does this paper actually say about Dawn? It says that Dawn is the best studied, broadly active glutamine antagonist having multiple supporting biochemical, preclinical, and clinical evaluations. Dawn was originally isolated from fermentation broth of a streptomyces in the 1950s. So this is kind of a pseudo natural substance. Dawn inhibits glutamine utilizing enzymes, including glutaminase at low molecular levels, as well as multiple glutamine amidotransferases involved in de novo purine and pyrimidine synthesis, coenzyme synthesis, amino acid synthesis, and hexosamine production. In early preclinical cancer models, Dawn inhibited the growth of multiple cancer cell lines in culture and prevented tumor growth and increased survival. Several murine cancer models, including murine sarcomas, carcinomas, leukemias. Of note, the most effective dosing regimens in some early rodent studies were daily low-dose therapy. Based on these data was interest into taking Dawn into human studies as an anti-tumor agent. So what can we take away from this? Number one, Dawn is the poster child for glutamine inhibition, period. It has pharmacologic activity on several glutamine inhibiting enzymes and at a high enough dose can actually inhibit other types of amino acid synthesis and transport. There are a host of studies that were done on a variety of cancers that showed promise. There is two major types of dosing strategies. There is a low dose and a high dose, intermittent dosing. I'm not going to get into the details of that dosing here because that's not the role of these videos. That is a talk between you and your doctor who has access to these medications and if they're willing to use them for the purpose of metabolic therapy. But what I think is also very interesting and gives me a little hope is that it seems as if this forgotten drug is starting to pick up a little bit of steam again from the research community. And hopefully we can get some better human data 
to use Dawn as it is likely going to be the most effective in combination with the foundations of a metabolic approach, as Dr. Seyfried has mentioned in his talks. As we know, glutamine is involved in more than just energy production through the TCA cycle. It is also responsible for a lot of molecules that are synthesized from glutamine, such as nucleotides for DNA and RNA synthesis, coenzyme synthesis, amino acid synthesis, lipid synthesis, hexamine synthesis, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So by shutting down this, and what is not actually shown here is the critical importance of glutamine for the production of glutathione to help protect cancer cells against oxidative damage. So the enzyme that is most characteristically inhibited by Dawn is this glutaminase enzyme. And it's not well shown in this picture, and I'm going to show you a better picture here, but glutaminase is this GLS enzyme, and it's going to convert glutamine to glutamate. And that is going to allow for further chemical modification to take place. And part of that chemical modification is done through these glutamate dehydrogenase enzymes and being converted into alpha-ketoglutarate so it can be utilized in the TCA cycle to further downstream be responsible for lipid and nucleotide synthesis as well as amino acid synthesis as shown right here. So this is the location where Don is most characteristically seen to work. And it's shown again here in this picture where glutamine is being converted into glutamate by this glutaminase enzyme. And Don here is blocking that action. And this paper is titled Reviving Lanidamine and 6-Diazo-5-Oxy-L-Norleucine to be used in combination for metabolic cancer therapy. And what it says here is that in this review, a PubMed search using the words leninamide and Dawn was undertaken to analyze existing information on preclinical and clinical studies of these drugs for cancer treatment. Data show that they exhibit antitumor effects. Besides, there are also suggestions that they are synergistic. We conclude that leninamide and Dawn are safe and potentially effective drugs that need to be reevaluated in combination as a metabolic therapy for cancer. And I think this is an interesting study because what they're showing is that we know that these medications in a vacuum are effective on their own. But given that we have this new framework of a metabolic therapy for cancer by the therapeutic inhibition of glucose and glutamine, what would happen if we put these medications in combination? And data suggests that they are synergistic. So the question for me as a clinician is, well, first of all, why not use something more natural to block glucose uptake? And why stop at one agent in the endeavor for that? Why not use five different agents that can help lower glucose utilization and uptake, or for example, block the conversion of pyruvate to lactate, and at the same time, try to maximize this conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, like we talked about during the DCA thymine video, and try to use a variety of glutamine inhibitors as a framework of metabolic therapy. And that is what I personally propose as being the likely winning strategy for the metabolic therapy for cancer. These nutraceuticals, phytonutrients, are likely going to work heavily in combination. And the cool thing is that a lot of the phytonutrients are also pleiotrophic in the way they act. So for example, quercetin or berberine or curcumin, they could have 15 or 20 different actions on cancer cells in a variety of ways, whether it be inflammation, whether it be oxidative stress, whether it be apoptosis, whether it be cell cycle cellular signaling pathways, but also have diverse effects on the glucose and glutamine system, which I think is a really amazing, miraculous thing. But needless to say, this is a neat study where these researchers were utilizing just two agents and you're starting to see the synergistic effects. And it probably also points out to why maybe Don, when used in a vacuum, was not as effective because it's only blocking one end of the spectrum of things that are metabolically wrong with these cancer cells. So I do believe that the work that needs to be done going forward in the lab, at the bench, in clinical trials is a combination approach so that we at the bedside, the clinicians who are actually treating patients on a day-to-day -day basis have the best information available of how to move forward and help people heal from these terrible diseases. So I wanted to end the video on this because I alluded to the fact that research has been going on since the 50s and is still going on today. So this is a paper that was published in January, 2024, in Nature, which is a high-powered journal, and it is talking about targeting pancreatic cancer metabolic dependencies through glutamine antagonism. And it's using Dawn in the paper, 
And there's another paper also on pancreatic cancer published in Cancer Research in February of 2024 that is using Dawn for the metabolic treatment of cancer. And I just want to say that and reiterate that this gives me a lot of hope that work is still being done utilizing these old drugs that don't need to be patent, don't need to be millions of dollars. They are things that we already have in our toolbox that can still be used today when used smartly, now that we have a much better understanding about cancer metabolism in 2024 than we did back in 1950. I hope that you are starting to appreciate all of the groundwork that we laid in the last five to six months, talking about the Warburg effect, talking about the reliance of cancer on the amino acid glutamine, and a lot of the biochemical pathways that are involved in these aberrant metabolic states, it's happening. And you can see how that hard work and maybe in some cases pain, looking at these diagrams and these papers can immediately pay off when we start to talk about real world strategies and therapeutics for the metabolic treatment of cancer. Because now you're understanding where these things are actually working and why they work. And you can potentially, in your mind's eye, see the potential of these things working in a beautiful synergistic way in the future. Essentially, starving cancer of the vital fuels and energy substrates that it needs to continue. If you like this video, please like it. If you have somebody in your life who is struggling with cancer and they could use this information, please share it. And until next time.